Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this right here, I, I just came across a story about um, a British fighter that I am a fan of. I, I enjoy watching him fight. You know, I've been I've had, I've had the chance to go live for a, a handful of his fights in the professional ranks of boxing, and, and that is the Big Cheese himself, Ted Cheeseman. Now, Ted Cheeseman, for those of you who don't know who the hell he is, he's a a, a fighter. From the UK, who never quite broke through the European level. Um, his biggest fight was against Sergio Garcia for the European uh, junior middleweight title, and he got absolutely outclassed, outboxed, and schooled. You know, since that fight, he's taken on the like the likes of uh, Scott Fitzgerald and um, Kieran Conway. He got a draw with Kieran Conway, and um, a lot of people thought he won the Kieran Conway fight, and then he lost to Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah. So, with that being said. This story came out in the BBC about how he's basically fighting against what he has an addiction to, which is sports betting, gambling. And he basically tells a story about how he hit rock bottom. And it, it, it's a long, lengthy article, so I won't I won't read the whole thing to you guys, but we will, we will touch on certain parts. But before I get into that, what I wanted to say is um, everybody in this world has things they're addicted to. Um, some people are addicted to social media some people are addicted to gambling some people are addicted to sex some people are addicted to porn some people are addicted to drugs some people are addicted to uh, success you know there's a lot of things that people are addicted to and um it, you gotta be careful with what you are addicted to because the wrong things will get you killed and leave you in a bad mental state and um ted Cheatham's a fighter that in his career he's boxed on he i mean he hasn't like seen like massive massive money but he's done well for himself you know he's gotten a uh, good number of sponsors in in the UK. Um, he's also been a fighter that, in his career, he's boxed on undercards of of, of matchroom shows and, and headlined a matchroom show, a couple of matchroom shows, the smallest shows in the UK. So he's he's made you will be led to believe he's made a decent wage for himself. But uh, let's get into the article. And let, let's see what what uh what Tetris had to say about just his gambling addiction. So basically, uh, the article basically talks about how. Ted Cheeseman, the last bet he ever placed in his life was uh, April 6, 2019, and he hasn't he hasn't bet since then. So he said a, a whole year free of gamble with, without gambling. And to that, I can say God bless you, Ted. You do you do, uh, great, great great on you because I know if you're if you're addict, if you're addicted to anything, it's hard to it's hard to go a year without. So um, just massive respect to Ted Cheeseman. But um, uh, basically he he speaks about in the article how when he would when he would get done training. He would go to uh, to go bet his money away. You know, he would go bet ten thousand pounds, thirty thousand um, pounds on whatever. And he pretty much, pretty much talked about how he pissed his money away um, when he was younger. Uh, here's what he said. Here, here's what he said. So he said, uh, "I quote: My hands are down." And and, th and he's talking about the Sergio Garcia fight, which if you haven't seen that fight, he fought this guy Sergio Garcia who. I think is going to go on to challenge uh, as a world as a world level welterweight. He fought uh, 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 he fought Sergio Garcia and absolutely got outclassed by him, and it was really disappointing because at that point Ted Cheeseman was undefeated, and I, and I, I was hoping he'd win that fight. But here's what uh, he said about that fight. He said, "I quote: My hands are down, and I'm letting him hit me in my and in my head. I'm punishing myself. You have a million thoughts about the biggest fight of your career, and mine were about money. I realized I had mucked up my chance." Gambling is like an up and down process. One day you lose five grand, you feel low, you hate yourself, you hate boxing, you want to kill yourself, all those emotions. The next day you go out, you win a grand, then you think you can break the system so your mood is up. Before the Garcia fight, the last five grand I had out of my purse, I gambled the night before the fight after the weigh-in. So think about that. This guy is weighing in for the biggest fight of his career and he's going to bet all his money away. He then says, I quote, um, I thought, come on. I thought I'm in a European title fight. I had this money. I wasted. I wasted all the rest. So it's either win or bust. I can honestly say, from my first fight in 2015 to my Garcia fight, I fought for free. Whether it was before the fight or in the weeks after the fight, losing my losing money always happened. When you're winning fights and earning money, you don't realize. Then the defeat comes, and I thought I either gamble and my life goes to pot, or I give up. Uh, then there's a quote from later on in the article where he says, I, "If I looked at my bank statements, I'd probably cry my eyes out." So this is a this is, this was a serious thing for the uh, the career of Ted Cheeseman because um, one thing I know about fighters because I, I've had the the privilege to get to know a lot of fighters 
in my couple of years covering the sport, you know, and I, I would even call a couple of these guys in boxing my friends, you know, guys that I talk to, guys that, you know, I care about as people. And one thing I know about fighters is that fighters have an addictive personality because you got to think of it, right? These guys train their whole lives to get to a certain place. And the ones that get to, get to fight on TV and main events that we, that we know their names, you know, that before we even saw or knew who they were, most of them, that was a decade plus, you know, years upon years of, of grinding and, and dedication to the sport. So in order to even get to, to get anywhere in boxing, you kind of have to have an addictive personality. A lot of fighters, at least if they're good, you know, a lot, a lot, most fighters in boxing have an addictive personality to training. That's why a lot of fighters, if you follow them on Instagram, on quarantine, are having a, a hard time with this um, with this virus because of the simple fact that there's no gyms open, there's no you know regi- there, there's no regimented lifestyle for them to live, you know, where they're going to the gym. They gotta they gotta discipline themselves, and a lot of fighters don't have it in them to discipline themselves. They, they need that regimen. They need to go to the gym. They need to spar. They need these things. So um, fighters have an addictive, addictive personalities, and I've I've met fighters who are addicted to training. I know I've met fighters that are addicted to PEDs. I've met fighters that are addicted to sex. I've met fighters that are addicted to gambling. Um, I've met fighters that are addicted to, you know, investing their money. You know, I've met, I've met fighters that are, are, are addicted to all kinds of things. And then i met fighters that are just the most disciplined people in the world. So it really depends on who you meet. But I know that a lot of fighters do have an addictive personality. And that's why, like, I think it's probably the best news I've heard so far or that I haven't gotten so far that on quarantine – we haven't heard of any fighters dying or offing themselves or killing themselves because a lot of times, you know, uh, we hear these stories about fighters uh, even after boxing where a lot of them, or even during boxing, a lot of them result to other drugs like cocaine because cocaine is the only drug that can give them that anything close to that rush of fighting under the lights in front of a big crowd because that is a drug for a lot of fighters and that's why a lot of fighters have a hard time hanging it up when it's time for them to hang the gloves up. But good on Ted, you know, um, good on him. He's young. He's, what, 24 years old. You know, I don't think Ted Cheatham's ever going to win any world titles or anything like that at 154 because I just, you know, I think his skills are very limited. Uh, he's got to really improve if he ever wants to think about that. He's never even really proven himself to be a, a top European level fighter. He's just a guy that's solid. He's a, he's a very high level British level fighter, but uh, nothing more than that. And he'll be involved in a lot of match uh, under cards and maybe smaller cards in the future, but... Um, regardless, it's good that he's, he's beginning to get a hold on this, and hopefully these demons don't rear their ugly head later on. So I'll, I'll be praying for Ted. Um, I'm a Ted Cheeseman fan. I, I, I watch his fights. I root for him. I like the guy. He, he, he's, a, he's like a likable guy outside the ring. Um, he's always in entertaining fights, even though he's not the most skilled guy in the world. And I appreciate you know all levels of boxing. I appreciate the guys that are world champions and undefeated. I appreciate the guys that are prospects. I appreciate the, the British-level fighters. You know, you got to really... If you're a boxing fan, you gotta really uh, love and appreciate all levels of boxing. But this was definitely a, an interesting article and, and, and a good reminder sometimes of the um, the addictive fighter, the, the addictive personality that fighters can have sometimes outside the ring, um, because it's it's what they did, it's what they develop in the gym towards training, and they can develop it towards other things in life that aren't so good for them as people. So I'll leave the article for you guys in the description description so you can read it for yourself and come to your own surmise and conclusion. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. A shout out to Ted Cheeseman. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time, take care, guys.